Good afternoon, Lorenzo Salazar, speaking from Naples. Uh, from your experience as Deputy General Prosecutor at the Appeal Court of Naples and Vice Chair of the Working Group on Bribery in International Transactions at OECD, are we winning or losing the war on anti-corruption in sport? Good question. The answer is not an easy one. A sport is competition. And in this case, I believe that we are confronted with a competition among two conflicting elements. On the one hand, we assist to the constant increase of the interests of criminal groups in general and organized crime in particular towards sport activities because of the high potential for illicit enrichment that corruption and bribery may produce with a relatively low risk for this criminal organization. On the other hand, the reaction of individuals and of the civil society, at least this is my personal perception, against corruption in sport, as well again, as, as against other forms of corruption and bribery, is also growing. This is because people have had enough of assisting to the systemic destruction of the part of their dreams that rely on the sport activities and sport champions, which are so loved by people. And uh, as my, many, many people are fed with systemic spoliation of scarce resources available due to the bribery of public officials and politicians. I cannot frankly <laughs> predict which one of these two factors will prevail uh, than the other one, but any initiative such as Sport Integrity Week 2022 certainly contributes to provide more impetus in this war against corruption. Surely will. Um, Lorenzo, Franco Frattini, SIGA's chair, also Italian, often says the COVID-19 pandemic crisis increased the influence of organized crime in sport. Is that also your perception? And if so, how does mafia manage to control clubs? President Frattini is not only the chair of SIGA, is also the president of the Italian Council of State. And from that position, he really has a sort of helicopter view on what happens in civil society, in the Italian civil society, during and after the pandemic crisis. I share the views of uh, President Frattini. What is for sure, this is my opinion at least, is that the impact of post-pandemic economic crisis on economic activities of any kind, including sport activities, has weakened the resilience of companies, entrepreneurs and clubs, exposing them to the risk of being contaminated by money of illicit origin aimed to take control over their activities. In the city, I know the best, Naples, this is really a phenomenon which we see on an everyday basis. Illicit activities which are taken over by the criminals with criminal assets. In addition, infiltrating sport activities provide mafias with new opportunities for creating consensus and becoming popular among the people, in particular among less wealthy and distracted people, which may also allow organized crime to influence elections at local and national level, making use of the power of persuasion, which comes from the popularity of football activities. This is at least the experience we had here in this region, it's this difficult region, may I say, where we often uh, have detected uh, mafia activities influencing also the uh, elections, the results of the elections, using also the, uh, the, the opportunities provided by a football match and other sport activities. Um, as you know, SIGA developed the universal standards on sport integrity and an independent rating and verification system, also known as SERVs. Covering all crucial aspects of the industry, we believe SERVs is the silver bullet to implementing sport integrity. What difference would it make if governments and sport authorities adopted the universal standards to ensure integrity? The adoption of common standards is always good news. The larger the spread, the better because this allows to create, create a level playing field where freedom of competition may be granted. This is valid in all sectors, so not only for sport, but more in general. For instance, in the context I know the best, the one of corruption in international business transactions, the creation 
of common standards by the OECD and by other international organizations, such as the Council of Europe or the United Nations, has certainly made a difference and has created a favorable environment where most of the main actors of international trade play all together the same game with the same rules. This is not always true with the states which are not yet parties to these instruments, to these binding instruments, such as the anti-bribery convention of the OECD, in particular with the new big players in East Asia. In the same mood, SIGA standards should become the reference worldwide in the specific sector of sport integrity. And again, this will create the level playing field we all aim at. Thank you, Lorenzo. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your expertise. And we are all you. looking forward to see you in person in Cascais in September. I'm also looking forward to see you there. Thank, Thank you. you very much.